welcome to Surviving the Slowdown. A crisis puts the spotlight on costs, resources, wages and operations. But it also throws up big opportunities. And these are the opportunities that this episode is going to focus on. Innovation, how are companies managing to buck the slowdown by re-strategizing and focusing and investing on innovation. I think, you know, as a company, we have to constantly invest in innovation. And that's what we do. First, the government invites all these people to invest in India. Yeah. And then they say, okay, buddy, I'm going to tax you on this and this. So it's not your choice as to what you're going to do. If you really have to be a, a global enterprise, right, you have to be innovative. India's laboratories are busy producing fresh research and new pharma molecules every day. But yet, India has not managed its miracle molecule so far. Companies such as Glenmark realize that a slowdown is a period when research can be consolidated and given a fresh boost. The firm has over two-thirds of its turnover coming from overseas and is now putting additional investments to innovate during a period of global crisis. Glenmark is looking at additional investments in research and development, making India a hub for biopharma and focusing on branded generics for high margins. Great pleasure to catch up with Glenn Saldana here at his facility in Nabi Mumbai. Thanks very much. My pleasure. How are you surviving the slowdown? Well, the economic slowdown, you know, although a global phenomenon, uh, the pharma industry is relatively well insulated from what's happening in terms of the global economy today. Yeah. But what about the Indian economy? <laughs> is that sort of making it harder to perform? Well, I think, um, you know, India, consumption of medication doesn't get affected to a great extent. Um, although the environment is very competitive, lots of players, lots of new players, uh, lots of big pharma companies trying to penetrate the Indian market. So there are lots of challenges in the Indian economy overall. But I think all in all, our industry is better poised than many of the other industries uh, in terms of growth and in terms of profitability compared to what's happening in the environment. Right. You know, um, the fact that you're a defensive sector it sort of kicks in during a time like this when all other sectors are getting impacted by policy sure. by general demand slowdown how does pharma sort of uh, use a, a crisis in the economy you know given the fact that a lot of the indian pharma companies the leading indian pharma companies are export oriented uh, almost for glenmark for instance almost 75 percent of our revenues comes from international markets with, of course, the rupee depreciating is helping a lot of the companies. So this yeah. is just one example of how, uh, despite seeing an economic slowdown and currency fluctuations, the, the overall industry is benefiting. Um, I think also our cost structures are much more competitive today. Right. So are I think, costs going up uh, over the last few years? I mean, clearly, uh, costs are escalating uh, purely because of the kind of inflation we are seeing in India today is very high. So as a result, wage inflation is going up. Um, increases are going up. Um, so overall cost structures are rising uh, in our industry overall. Yeah, that's interesting. We'll actually now head to the laboratory and catch up with Glenn on the specifics of what is likely to be the future of India's pharma industry. Well, so here we are at one of the laboratories at Glenmark's uh, offices in Navi, Mumbai, where things actually start happening. And they have been over the last 12 years. Sure. Uh, the story of Glenmark's dreams are actually coming into fruition. Tell us a little bit about what molecules, what stuff is already now getting ready. Well, we've been doing this now for 12 years, right, in terms of innovation. We've put our hearts and souls into innovation. And now, you know, we've had a lot of successes. Uh, we were clearly the most successful company. 2008-9, we had a number of failures and now we've actually picked the pieces together and over the last four or five years, we think we've got a very good pipeline of molecules, right, uh, which could potentially make it to market. Right. And what are these molecules dedicated towards? Because we know that Glenmark has a huge uh, pain segment. Right. You've got attention on asthma, yeah. diabetes. So the future that you're looking at, Converting these molecules, where are they directed? 
our lead compound is a compound called Rivamelast, which is uh, mainly in rheumatoid arthritis, asthma, and uh, we have one more segment that we are pursuing with Rivamelast. Uh, we have a couple of molecules with Sanofi Aventis, which we've partnered. We have a drug for pain. We have another drug uh, which is being pursued for ulcerative colitis. Then we have a, a, another compound called 17536, which is again in the pain space. Okay. So most of our efforts are in pain and, and respiratory as, as an indication. Like any investor's question, I'm going to ask you, what is the potential of these uh, drugs that will hit the market? Uh, clearly, you've got a market size uh, sure. sense of what they might be worth. I mean, these are all billion dollar drugs, right? Multi-billion dollar drugs. So. Um, you know, you're looking at multi-billion dollar drugs with potential patent life of 12 to 14 years. So these are long, you know, there's a long uh, time horizon, right, for, uh, for earnings potential on some of these molecules. But the good news is, you know, we've, we've done this for so many years. Uh, the, we've had our successes and failures, but the learnings, right, stay with you forever, yeah. right? So, the, the future molecules, right, will come through at a much faster pace than what we did in the last 10 to 15 years. Because now we know the game, we know the challenges, we know where we could go wrong. And, and we've modified our approach to make sure that now our success rate improves pretty significantly yeah, going forward. Okay, you know, in, in a time like this where, yes, some companies may still cash into a slowdown, but in your case, do you think innovation speeds up? when the economy slows because you have time to think, strategize, how does it work? Well, if you look at the ph global pharma industry today, most of big pharma, right, because of the kind of pressure they are under, you know, given their product patent cliffs and the number of products going off patent, they are, they've in fact cut back on innovation. Their primary focus today is generics, brand generics, right. more short-term opportunities where they can actually uh, make quick revenues, right? Uh, How are you all different? We, the way we've built the business, right, is we started off with generics. So that's our main stream of revenue. So we make a lot of money in generics, branded generics, right, um, and gives us stable revenues. And now we are hoping to use innovation to take us to the next level of growth, basically. Okay. So it's a, it's a slightly different scenario um, compared to what Big Pharma is going through. If I have to look into this decade and say, you know, where is this industry going? I think Big Pharma will have a lot of challenges in this decade, whereas generic and brand generic companies will only go up um, and uh, start what, to gain what's size. What's the breakup of your business if you look at generics uh, and, you know, just... So, it, we don't have an innovative product today, right? Yeah. Um, so, all our revenues comes out of generic products and branded generic products or specialty products, right? So, look into 2020 and tell us that some of the innovative products that you're hoping to bring to market yeah. Do you envisage a split in terms of revenue? Growth? Absolutely. So I think, you know, we, we feel that, you know, almost 50%, 30 to 50% of our revenues will come from innovative products in a 2020 scenario. Okay. Uh, and you're looking at one or two products contributing to that 30 to 50% at so that point. So you're a billion dollar company today. Sure. These molecules already give me a sense that you'll be multi-billion by the time, or hopefully by 2020. As a, as a promoter owner, Sure. Does it get harder as you go up the value chain, up the value itself? Well, I think, you know, uh, the whole innovation space is very exciting, right? And uh, if you really have to be a, a global enterprise, right, you have to be innovative. So I think you have to move up the value chain. There's very little choice. Uh, the generic industry, the brand generic industry is competitive yeah. and is going to be competitive in the years to come. So the only way to survive in the long run is to be innovative. I'm sure that the government is actually listening to what Glenn has just said because pharma and the future of pharma is actually going to define healthcare in India and that's a very critical piece of India's own growth story. With that, we're going to move away from here and take you straight to Microsoft. We'll be heading to Delhi for that.